There are a lot of great finishes out there, but many people are intimidated by the whole finishing process. So we've been making videos that help the average hobbyist woodworker get great results from common wood finishes. These videos, I think, are the best out there because they cover a lot of important points that others just seem to skip over. Below this video, I'll link to a playlist of our finishing videos that we've made so far. Just expand the video description, or you can also find it pinned to the top of the comments section. You really should check it out. There is a lot to learn in there. Now today, I want to talk about oil-based polyurethane because it's a very durable finish that's suited for both indoor and some outdoor projects. It's not difficult to apply, but I think my method will give you the best results. So first, you're going to prepare your surface by sanding really well. We've made a comprehensive sanding tutorial that explains how to properly sand, what grits to use, raising the grain, all that stuff. You'll find that in the playlist below as well. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to suggest sanding to no higher than 150, 180 if you plan to pl apply a wood stain, or go to 220, 240 if you plan to apply just polyurethane. Anything finer than 240 is a waste of time with this type of finish. I also recommend hand sanding your final grit, in this case I'm using 220, and going with the grain. This will disguise the fine scratches that the sandpaper leaves behind. Now we're dealing today with oil-based poly. If you're applying this in an enclosed space, you really should wear a respirator with activated charcoal filters. Now if you can work in a well-ventilated area, that's up to you whether you want to wear a respirator, but honestly, if you're going to be working around any oil-based finish for more than just a few minutes, it's probably a good idea to protect yourself unless you have excess brain cells to spare. The application process for water-based poly is very similar to oil-based poly, but we'll make a separate video about that down the road. Oil-based poly typically comes in three sheens, gloss, semi-gloss, and satin. All of them must be mixed thoroughly. But semi-gloss, and especially satin, must not only be mixed well to start out, it also must be mixed again between coats and perhaps periodically while you work if it's taking you more than a half hour or so to apply a single coat. That's because satin and semi-gloss finishes contain flattening agents to reduce their naturally glossy sheen. And you have to keep those flatteners suspended in the liquid or you're going to get an uneven finish. So keep it mixed. And notice I said mix it. Don't shake polyurethane. You don't want a bunch of air bubbles in there. So stir it well, then stir it some more, and stir it often. I never like to use poly straight from the can. You want to get rid of any crud or partially crystallized finish that may be in there. So get yourself some disposable strainers. You can find these wherever you bought your can of finish. After it's mixed, pour some through the strainer into a clean container and let it slowly run through that fine mesh. This will help with air bubbles as well. You don't have to strain the whole can, just do what you think you're going to need for the coat you're about to apply. Now you have to decide if you're going to use the poly as it is, or if you'll need to thin it. Any poly can be thinned. Water-based poly is thinned with water, oil-based poly is thinned with mineral spirits or other thinners. Whether to thin and how much to thin depends on a lot of factors, and I don't want to complicate this more than I have to. So simply put, if you're going to brush it on, you probably don't need to thin it right out of the can unless it's an old can that's kind of started to thicken up a little bit. This is the consistency you're looking for if you do intend to brush it on. If you're going to wipe on the poly with a cloth, then you will need to thin it by as much as 50%, and we'll get to that shortly. So the question is, should you brush it on or should you wipe it on? Honestly, if you're new to this whole process, I think you should probably wipe it on. It's just easier to wipe on poly. But since you have to thin the finish so much to wipe it on easily, you do have to be more careful to avoid things like runs, especially on vertical surfaces, and you're going to have to apply more coats overall. Brushing on poly, on the other hand, involves a little bit more technique but it's worth learning to do. I'm going to show you both in this video. First we'll brush it on, then we'll wipe it on. Of course, to brush it on, you need the right brush. Make sure that it's labeled for oil-based finishes, not for latex paint. This usually means a natural bristle brush. White china bristles come from hogs. They're very absorbent, so they hold the finish well. 
and the solvents in the finish won't break this type of brush down as they will a synthetic brush, so the bristles will remain straight and smooth. I'm going to be working on a scrap of plywood just to demonstrate the process, but I assume that you've sanded yours well and you've cleaned up all the dust. I like to wipe mine with denatured alcohol, but you could use a slightly water dampened cloth. I'm also assuming you're working in a relatively dust free environment. If it's the same place where you did your sanding, you probably should let the dust settle for a couple hours, then give your project its final wipe down, and then you'll be ready to finish. So dip your brush no more than halfway into the finish, wipe off the excess, and begin applying it. Spread it out well. It's better to apply three or more thinner coats than two thick coats. And as much as possible, brush with the grain, not across it. It is very important to always work wet. This means you shouldn't try to brush wet poly over a spot that's already begun to dry. For example, I like to work down the length of the surface in narrow sections but I must keep each section narrow enough or I must work fast enough so that my next stripe can overlap this first one before it has begun to dry. I don't want to put new wet finish over sticky, partially dry finish. This could take a little bit of planning, especially if you're working on a large surface like a tabletop. But in most cases, if you're working out of the sun in a relatively cool place, you should have enough time to cover the whole surface before it begins to dry, but keep an eye on it. Remember to brush with the grain. As I work, I like to go back over each section with long parallel strokes. This will help to even everything out. You don't want areas that are significantly thicker than other places. You can see how uneven this looks when the light hits it. But as long as the finish is still wet, I can go back and even this out. What I like to do is squeeze any excess finish from my brush so that it's all but dry. Then I go back over the surface using just the tip of the brush with long, light, parallel strokes that run the full length of the surface. You can see how the dry brush evens out the finish with each overlapping stroke. This works really well, but as I said, the poly must be good and wet to do this. If it's a reasonably small surface like this one was, you can go back and forth over this with that dry brushing technique after it's been fully covered and finished. But if it's a really large surface, you may have to do these dry smoothing strokes one section at a time as you work. Once everything's leveled, leave it alone. Don't keep brushing because if it starts to get tacky, continue brushing will make a mess of this coat. Even if you see a spot you missed, if it started to dry, leave it alone. You can fix it on the next coat. I like to clean my brush between coats so it doesn't get gummy. A little mineral spirits or whatever synthetic brush cleaner you can get your hands on will do the job. Then put it back in the cardboard cover because that's going to help it keep its shape. Let this coat dry for at least a few hours. Overnight's best. Before you apply the second coat, you're going to have to lightly sand this one. And if it's not dry enough, you're going to quickly gum up your sandpaper, so give it time to dry. Before we sand, let's talk about the wiping poly. You can make your own wiping poly by simply adding mineral spirits or turpentine or another solvent that's compatible with an oil-based finish. We have a video about solvents that you'll find in that playlist I've linked to below. I like it pretty thin, as you can see in this bottle. This is a 50% polyurethane, 50% mineral spirits mix. I like to mix it in a sports drink bottle because the nozzle makes it easy to apply. Just make sure that you properly label the bottle if you're going to leave leftovers in there. The wiping is done with a lint-free cotton cloth. You can buy wiping cloths in packs in many home centers or online, or you can just use an old piece of a t-shirt. You don't need a large piece, just enough to fold into a small pad like this. Applying the wipe on poly couldn't be easier. Just dump some on and spread it with the cloth. Because it's so thin, it's going to spread very easily and it's going to soak in quickly. Some parts of the grain may really absorb more, so if it looks a little dry in certain areas, add more poly to it. You can quickly spread in any direction, but you should finish by wiping with the grain. You're not going to have to level it out like you did the thicker poly, which is what makes this method so easy. However, since so much of this poly has been diluted with solvent that's going to evaporate, the coat will be much thinner. You can see the difference here. The regular poly is on the left, the wipe on poly is on the right. Note how much thicker one coat is compared to the other. 
a thinner coat is going to dry faster, and you may be able to sand within just a few hours. This could allow you to apply two or more coats with the wipe on poly in the same amount of time it takes to apply a single coat with a regular poly. But it also is going to take twice as many coats of wipe on poly to build up the same protective finish that you'll get with one coat of the regular poly. So there's a trade off for the convenience there. Now, when it comes time to sand, which I'm going to show you on a different project, use something around 400 grit. Sand very lightly. You're not trying to take off finish, you just want to level out the little bumps. Feel the surface with your hand as you work. It should be perfectly smooth when you're done sanding. If your sandpaper is gumming up, you probably need to give that coat more time to dry. When everything is smooth, wipe off the sanding dust with a lightly dampened cloth. Water is just fine in this case. Then repeat the same process for a second and a third coat if you're brushing it on, and perhaps a fourth, fifth, or sixth coat for wipe on poly. Don't forget to lightly sand with 400 between coats. After the final coat, get yourself a brown paper bag like you get at grocery stores. Use this just as you did sandpaper to buff the surface as you carefully feel for any tiny bumps. This will make it slick as snot and you will have a finish you can be proud of. Now check this out. We use blade guards and push sticks and safety glasses and hearing protection to keep us safe because we want to enjoy this craft for many years to come. But what about our lungs? I like Trend Stealth masks because they have silicone bodies that fully seal on my face. This is important to me because a leaky mask is a useless mask. The original Stealth features a compact size, easily adjustable dual straps for a proper fit on your face, a downward facing exhale valve that won't fog your glasses, and replaceable N100 filters. The Stealth Lite looks like an ordinary disposable mask, but it features the same silicone seals, an advanced head strap system, and a downward facing exhale valve. The 0.3 micron filter is replaceable as well. I switched to Trend Stealth masks for my dusty work a couple years ago because they offer the advanced protection of a larger canister respirator in a less cumbersome size that's comfortable to wear all day long. Check them out at the link below the video.